Hello, folks. I think um, hopefully everybody who's in the waiting room is joining us. I see there's uh, someone who's still connecting. Uh, I'm Amelia Cacciaparo. I'm TCG's Director of Grant Making Programs. Thanks so very, very much on this afternoon in New York. I'm not sure wherever you're calling in from. Hopefully uh, you're having a good, joyous day so far. Um, just to make sure that you're all in the right place. Uh, this is an info session for the Willa Kim Costume Design Scholarship. You see the slide on the screen there. Um, I'm calling in from the ancestral home and the stolen land of many indigenous people, including the Lene Lenape people, uh, also known as Manahata. Uh, I'm a brown skinned Filipina with short black hair, black glasses, I'm wearing a black and white sweater, and behind me is a blue wall. Uh, I'm going to pass it to Big to intro herself. Thank you, Amelia. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Big Raksak Gong Seng. I'm the TCG's Assistant Director of Grant Making Programs. My pronouns are she and they. I'm calling from uh, the land of the Lenape people and uh, many lands here. Um, I am a brown-skinned Thai immigrant with black hair wearing a turquoise jumpsuit today. Uh, so that's my visual description. I'll pass the mic on to my colleague, Jupiter. You got it. Thank you, Big. Hi, y'all. I'm Jupiter. My pronouns are he, him. Um, and I'm the membership assistant at TCG. And so I'm just going to be supporting this. Um, and yeah, and I, for my descriptor, I have messy hair. I'm brown skin, Um, and I'm a Vietnamese American. So that really represents most of, most of my outward being. Um, yeah, and that's me. So I'll pass it back to Big. Thank you. Um, so before we get started, uh, we would like to take a moment to offer our respects to the many lands on which we gather and to honor the traditional stewards of these lands. If you have a land acknowledgement as part of your personal practice, we invite you to share them in the chat now. While land acknowledgement Land acknowledgement is a positive first step. It is also important to go beyond that, perhaps by asking yourself, how are you using your privilege to support Indigenous people and communities? How are you giving back to the land that you are on? Thank you. I'll pass the mic back on to Amelia. Okay, thanks, y'all. We just always like to start that way to ground ourselves. Um, so Big and I are working together to administer the Willa Kim Costume Design Scholarship, and its program uh, is supported by the estate of Willa Kim. Uh, we're going to try to get to as many questions as possible today, but please know that at any time, you can always email us or actually Big uh, at rkongseng at tcg.org, and we'll get that on a screen in a second. Um, and Big will get back to you uh, as soon as possible. So today's call is really designed to provide you with an overview of the Willa Kim Costume Design Scholarship Program and really to help you prepare your application. Um, I might guess that many of you actually may be applying for a TCG grant program uh, for the first time, and we're gonna do our very best to demystify and clarify the process. Um, we're working to make applying for this program as streamlined as possible with a quick turnaround time. Um, so Big, do you wanna take the mic to go over a few of the mechanics for the call? Thank you, Amelia. Um, so next slide, please, Jupiter. Thank you. So here again, this is my email, uh, rkongseng at tcg.org. It's going to be everywhere on the website. You might have seen it already. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email. Um, and so next slide, please. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> today, today's call will last about 30 minutes to 60 minutes and will be recorded for later viewing on TCG's website and YouTube. We will pause from time to time to respond to questions submitted to us on Zoom chat. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to just type it down there on Zoom chat. And I'll keep checking as we go so that it doesn't feel like it's a one-way communication all the time. Um, so you may not know about TCG's work, and we are going to start by talking about our mission values as it relates to this program. So next slide, please. 
Oh, actually, I might be wrong. Let's go back one more slide. Sorry, Jupiter. Thank you. One second, it's just a little frozen. Sure, my bad. So while Jupiter is doing that, um, in case you're not familiar with what TCG does, uh, so to give you some background about us, in 2021, TCG celebrated our 60th anniversary, and after a year-long strategic planning process, we crafted a reframed mission, and that mission is to lead for a just and thriving theater ecology with a commitment to centering Black, Indigenous, and people of, of color, or BIPOC, in all of our programs and services and partnerships. We are using the term BIPOC for solidarity purposes, representing a multiplicity of racial, ethnic, and cultural groups. Of course, we acknowledge that the term BIPOC is imperfect, not universally embraced by many who identify as people of color or POC and or people of the global majority or PGM. And that language is, in a constant state of reimagination and redefinition. For reference, Black, Indigenous, and people of color represent over 80% of the global population. It is possible that during this program period, the language may shift again. So about TCG, since its founding in 1961, TCG's constituency has grown from a handful of groundbreaking theaters to over 750 member theaters and affiliate organizations and over 3,000 individual members. TCG reaches over 1 million students, audience members, and theater professionals each year through its program and services. So you can read more about our membership benefits and services on our website under the membership tab. So Jupiter would drop the link there in the moment. Um, and for now, I'll pass the mic on to Amelia to go over TCG programs and services. Uh, as you'll see, if you uh, look around the TCG website, you'll see that the Willa Kim program is one of many things that we do. Uh, the core elements of our programs and services are um, networking and knowledge building. So we do conferences and events. Uh, we have a um, series of workshops and webinars uh, called Charge Up. That is part of our Theater for Activism series. Uh, that's going to be from November 9th to the 10th uh, in just a couple of weeks. Uh, and then the third part of the um, Theater for Activism series uh, Rise Up is going to be happening in June in Chicago uh, during our national conference, which is one of our tentpole events. Um, so it'll be a hybrid gathering uh, based in Chicago, June 20th to the 24th in 2024, so next year. Um, we also do uh, a great deal of research and surveys, really gathering information about the field, how folks are doing, taking a temperature check. Uh, we've done uh, surveys and research on the impact of COVID on our field. We recently did a town hall, uh, the Crisis and Chrysalis Town Hall on September 11th, uh, that was really focusing on uh, the state of theater, who's thriving, and if th folks are not thriving, why not? What are the, the challenges the field is facing? Um, we also do grant making. Um, this is one of several grant making programs that we currently have, and it does change uh, from year to year, depending on a variety of factors the field needs uh, being one of the main factors. So in addition to this program, we also administer the Fox Foundation Resident Actor Fellows. Uh, we have In the Stacks that we just launched, which is a book credit program for libraries, uh, and also our Thrive program uh, to uplift theaters of color. Um, we have professional development opportunities that include the Rising Leaders of Color, which is a year-long um, program uplifting and supporting folks that are earlier in their career. And that's going to be um, in Chicago for folks based in Chicago in 2024. And the current uh, recipients in Rising Leaders of Color 2023 are actually um, three critics journalists. Um, we believe that leaders are in all areas of the field and it's not positional, it's just uh, not 
uh, only the executive leadership. So you all who are designers, we believe that there are many, many leaders within the design field as well. Uh, another area of TCG's work is publishing. Um, probably and hopefully you're very familiar with American Theater Magazine, um, which is actually TCG's publication. And it's been published online uh, in virtual uh, format for the last couple of years during the pandemic. Uh, and we just launched, actually just released on Monday, uh, the return to print uh, with a new issue uh, available in a lot of bookstores, newsstands, and you can also subscribe to it. And it's a great rundown of uh, theater seasons um, at theaters across the country, as well as some informational um, little nuggets that are interesting. What are the most produced plays and who are the most produced playwrights in this season? Um, TCG is also the largest not-for-profit publisher in the U.S., and our authors have been honored with numerous Pulitzer Prizes, Tony Awards, the Nobel Prize for Literature, countless Obie Awards, Off-Broadway Awards, uh, the Nobel Prize, I think I just said that a second ago, the Drama Desk Awards, um, and lots of other national and international prizes. Um, what I think is important to note is that we have a strong commitment to our writers and that once we take them into our circle of writers, uh, we publish everything that they write throughout their career and we will keep all of their work in print in perpetuity and as long as a TCG is around which I hope is going to be a long long time to come still. Um, our, the authors uh, in our circle uh, include Michael R. Jackson, Heidi Schreck, Jeremy O'Harris, The Kilroy's List, Tony Kushner, Susan Laurie Parks, Lynn Nottage and many many more. Um, and please check those out both in the online TCG bookstore or it's probably if you're on a campus in your campus bookstore. Um, another area of TCG's work uh, is our national and global leadership and advocacy. Um, TCG works with our sister service organizations and we co-founded the Performing Arts Alliance which advocates for the arts on a national level. Uh, an example of the advocacy work we did was over the pandemic, uh, we worked really hard with a lot of colleagues in the field to um, push the government to provide the SBOG grants, the Shuttered Venue Grants, which uh, provided a lot of support to theaters around the country. Um, TCG is the home also for the U.S. Center for the International Theater Institute. And together with our friends at the Laboratory for Global Performance and Politics in D.C. at Georgetown University, we administer uh, ITI, International Theater Institute U.S. And one of the major activities uh, of ITI includes World Theater Day, which we celebrate yearly on March 27th. Lots of other activities and you can look at them on our website. Uh, also, the Climate Action Community is an open circle community um, and the circle is part of uh, TCG's uh, online structure to create communities virtually. Uh, and it's for all theater commi uh, people committed to climate action and environmental justice. Uh, the community supports peer-driven learning, accountability, and action. And participants ask questions, share resources, and take collective action, both within the theater sector and our broader world. I know that's a lot of information, but we did want to at, at least give you a context for the work that we're doing. So big. Thank you, Amelia. Uh, next slide, please. And one of the work that we are doing is the Willa Kim Scholarship Program that we're talking about, right? So let's dive into it. Um, the Willa Kim Program's goal is to bolster the recipient's ability to communicate their artistic vision effectively through technical skills in hand drawing and painting. So that's the key. Um, recipients will receive up to 7,500 to be used towards tuition, registration fees, supplies, or travel expenses over a one-year period between February 15, 2024, so that's next year, until February 15, 2025, which is next two years. 
International study is allowable, but the scholarship is limited to tuition, registration fees, supplies, and or travel expenses only. The recipient scholarship activities may take place while they are on break from their university, college, or training program. Doesn't have to happen during the semester. And a quick note, all of TCG's grant programs are leaving, living and breathing programs. What does that mean? It means that we are constantly evaluating their impact on the field and we make course adjustments whenever necessary, particularly as our field emerges from the pandemic. Um, so, Amelia, could you talk about eligibility? Sure. Um, I think uh, we've got a slide on eligibility coming up, but I'll just start talking as, um, there we go. Uh, so this program is created for students who are enrolled and in good standing at a college, university, or professional training program at the beginning of the scholarship period, which uh, Big mentioned earlier is February 15th, 2024. Uh, so applicants enrolled in a related program, such as fashion design, are welcome, as long as they can demonstrate a commitment to working as a, a costume designer. Uh, we don't require proof of citizenship. Um, however, applicants must be able to receive taxable income in the U.S. Um, the program defines theater in its broadest terms, including dramatic theater, music theater, physical theater, object theater, uh, and artists working in multiple, uh, multidisciplinary ways are eligible. Uh, and again, will need to demonstrate a strong theatrical through line in their costume design work. Big? Thank you. Next slide, please. So let's talk about the selection criteria. Um, this program uses a peer panel process. We will have an independent panel of theater leaders who are working professionals and knowledgeable about the theater field. Applications will be reviewed based on the following and must demonstrate, number one, artistry, creativity, and skills. Number two, evidence of commitment ability and a clear plan to improve the applicant's skills as a costume designer. Number three, degree to which the scholarship can contribute to the applicant's artistic growth. Number four, appropriateness of the proposed budget and scholarship activities, and that includes travel if requested. Number five, potential for future excellence as a professional costume designer. Uh, and number six, commitment to a career in the not-for-profit professional theater in the U.S. Let's see. And uh, with these criteria um, for the selection process, there will be a finalist uh, interview as well. And a note, uh, when you submit an application, don't get caught up in grant speak. What does that mean, right? Meaning that uh, don't get caught up in the writing in into writing what you think we want to hear from you. Just try to let your personal voice come through, and the panelists will likely not because the the panelists will likely not know you or your work before. So it's important for them to have a clear sense of who you are as a costume designer and a, a sense of your work as well. So uh, I'll pause there for a second. I'll look at the chat to see if there's any questions. Um, I don't see any at the moment, uh, but I still, we still invite you to put in any uh, questions or comments if you have along the way. And we will also have a space at the end to take some questions as well. So for now, I guess we're gonna keep going. So Amelia, would you like to talk about the timeline? Sure. Uh, and maybe just one thing actually to add on to the uh, eligibility, just want to underscore that uh, while uh, the majority of our applicants and recipients have been on the mainland of U.S., the U.S., we certainly are also including Puerto Rico and considering all tribal nations as well. Um, so, yeah, we've got the timeline here. Um, so the application deadline is a firm one. Um, so 
uh, hopefully that's noted and you set the alarm to go off so you'll know when you've got to get that application in. So that's the deadline for the online application recommendations, your academic advisor support all on the same date there, right? Uh, and please note the time zone. Um, and we're going to be uh, notifying applicants uh, by the date that you see here, Friday, February 9th. The earliest start date is February 15th, 2024, and activities can go until uh, February 15th, 2025. Um, and should actually also uh, mention that uh, the activities don't have to be consecutive. So uh, it doesn't have to be, say, three months in a row over the summer, you're going to just get all the activities done. Some of our recipients have done uh, a workshop over a couple of weekends, and then a month later, they travel to somewhere and they do more activities and then they come back and then they take online um, training. Um, so it really is a very hand tailored program and we try as much as possible not to be prescriptive that we need to hear from you as to what you feel will help you be the strongest. Um, so big actually, passing to you now I think. Thank you. Um, next slide please. So how do you apply? Right. So in order to apply, you need to submit five items to begin with. Number one, application form, definitely. So you must submit the form along with other required documents that we're going to talk about um, through the TCG online application portal only. Cannot email it to me, cannot mail it in to us, um, only on the online portal. Uh, which is linked at the top of the website. You must, uh, I believe you have seen it already. Um, and of course, it goes without saying that applications must be developed and submitted by the applicant, not someone else. Number two, you would also need uh, to submit a resume, CV, or bio. You will be asked to upload uh, a resume, CV, or bio of no longer than two pages. Additional pages will not be forwarded to the panel. Number three, a portfolio, an important part of it. Um, you will be asked to also upload a portfolio on the application portal. Physical items will not be accepted. So you will be asked to submit work from at least two projects that express your creative process from inspiration through finished product. Inspiration through finished product. Although you can submit materials from a project that has not yet been produced, at least one project must have been fully realized. So two projects minimum, at least one project must have been fully realized. And then in addition to the two required projects, you can submit two more projects. The additional projects number three and number four may include examples of your artistic work outside of costume design. Whether it be 2D or 3D, in any medium for from drawing, painting, figure drawing, illustration, embroidery, sculpture, pottery, to photography. All work for costume design is welcome. Note that the project you mentioned in question three of the application form must be in the portfolio. Um, so when you when you are applying, there will be a note in there as well. So don't don't be afraid that you will miss out on this because it will be noted in the application form. But just know that uh, the project that you mentioned in question three, it has to be in the portfolio. Arrange your materials in the order you want the panel to review. So that's the tip. And also clearly describe your work in the application form when you upload your file. To do that, include the textile description, character, production, and producer. These, this information will be helpful. So that's the portfolio. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat and then we'll, we will get back to address it. Number four, you would have to submit, not you actually, but you would have to ask two recommenders to submit two recommendations on your behalf. The recommenders should be familiar with your work and must be available to submit the recommendations through TCG online portal by the deadline. 
Note that you are responsible for sharing the instructions with your recommenders. TCG will not send any information to your recommenders on your behalf. It is important as well to provide your full name as written on the application form to your recommenders. So that way your recommenders can enter uh, your name, the applicant name, uh, as written on your application. And it's uh, gonna be easy to, to match your application with your recommendations. And last but not least, number five, support from an academic advisor. So you are required to identify an academic advisor at your college, university, or training program, wherever you are. That person must be in support of your proposed scholarship activities and can support you in balancing your scholarship activities and required cu curriculum at your home institutions. The ac academic advisor will not need to submit a recommendation, they will only need to quickly confirm their support on the TCG online portal. So it's not like you are asking for the third recommendation from your academic advisor. It's just a, a conf confirmation of support. Again, you are responsible for sharing the instructions with your academic advisor as well. TCG would not send anything to your advisor. And again, it is also important to provide your full name as written on the application form to your academic advisor. For easy access, the online portals are basically a Google form. There are eight narrative questions to which you can respond in two formats. You can either respond as an audio or a video recording, or you can respond as a text submission. You can change the format for each narrative question. You don't have to stick with one format from uh, question one to question eight. No, you can do audio for question one. You can do text for question two, video for question three, whatever works best for you. And after review and submit, uh, after you review and submit the application, you will receive a confirmation email. Please save this email as proof of application. If you do not receive it within an hour, please contact me at rkongseng at tct.org. Uh, my contact is also available at the end of this session and also on the website as well. Um, so I'm gonna pause there, Amelia. I'm actually gonna pass the floor back to you, Amelia. Um, let's see, if, are there any questions at all? I don't see one yet. Okay. What happens often is uh, as soon as, oh, I do see a question here. Sure. Uh, just going to voice it here. Uh, would a project be the costume of a singular character from a show or could multiple characters from the show be considered? Uh, certainly, yes. Uh, multiple characters are fine. We try to leave it as open as possible so you could have all of your work samples be of a single character. Uh, conceivably, in some shows, they have multiple costume changes, so you might want to show your range that way. Um, I would say, though, something to consider is you want to submit work that can show uh, your technical skill as well as your range. Uh, you. Hopefully that helped. Um, hi, let's see. Can your academic advisor also act as one of your recommenders? They can, but I would actually suggest that you get somebody else who is separate because once we have your advisor sign off on the form, we're going to assume that they're in support of you. They know your work well. Um, so it uh, can be a peer, a fellow artist. It could be a teacher or mentor. It could be you know, a variety of people, a director who might have worked with you, um, an actor who loved the way the clothes fit, uh, any of that, right? Um, so is digital illustration considered or should sketches be hand-drawn? Yeah, great question. Uh, because specifically, uh, Willa, actually, this is this program is all in the spirit of Willa Kim. Um, she felt strongly that hand drawing skills are some of the best ways to communicate ideas with collaborators, particularly directors. Uh, we know that 
uh, nowadays, frankly, more and more people are using uh, digital illustrations um, and it's just easier and cleaner and quicker in a lot of ways. But for this program, we're specifically looking at your hand drawing um, skill. Uh, you could include some uh, illustrations that are digital and maybe the supplemental materials, but I wouldn't uh, suggest submitting those as your main um, portfolio pieces. Let's see, I think, okay, that might be it for now. Um, what often happens is, you know, as soon as we get off the call, then a question comes to you or certainly as you're going through the application and just, you know, um, reflecting on, on all of the, the things that we've said today, there might be questions that'll come back to you. I can't underscore enough that we are uh, available, accessible, want to help you. Uh, one of, I think, our greatest joys is being able to give away grants to artists. So uh, we want you to help that. We want to try to break down whatever obstacle or barrier you might find in the application process. Um, I'm just going to pause for a quick second to see if any other questions popped up. Uh, do you have to already be enrolled in this program? Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean. You do have to currently be a student. Um, so I, could you clarify? Uh, sorry. Uh, if you... You could even uh, voice the question if you wanted to, uh, we could take your, um, put, turn your mic on. Ah, okay, you already have to be in an art school. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, an art school. You could be again in a university training program, something that is not as structured and formal. Um, so let's say you're currently um, a student at, um, uh, San Francisco State University, and uh, you heard about a great series of classes at the Chicago Art Institute, uh, well, then you can apply for the uh, programs and classes and training that you're looking at Chicago, even though you're in a different school in a different city. Hope that makes sense. Um, should and the main... Amelia, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. If I may add, uh, you don't have to already be enrolled in that extracurricular uh, program. Um, once you get your scholarship, you can apply after that. Or if you are already enrolled and you want to use this as part of your uh, extracurricular, that's okay. That's allowable as long as it's extracurricular, as long as it's not a part of your uh, program at the home institution. Great. Thanks, Big, for clarifying that. Um, so I see another question here. Should the main two projects in the portfolio need to be theater projects or can it also be fashion projects? Absolutely. Uh, we're encouraging folks who might, we know that these days folks work in a variety of mediums, in a variety of skills and disciplines. Um, however, this is a program for costume designers. So we do wanna see um, some thought, some work that is specifically theatrical versus fashion. And um, the skills, the, the approach often to um, um, artwork for fashion projects is very different from theater projects in a lot of ways. But it could certainly be part of your portfolio. Let's see, just pausing a second. I don't see any other questions popping up at the moment. Not yet. Uh, but if I may add to your uh, last answer, Amelia, um, one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the selection criteria is actually commitment to a career in the not for profit professional theater field in the U.S. as well. Um, so as long as you can demonstrate that that you know you've been working in the fashion industry, but also you have a commitment to the theater field, the not for profit uh, professional theater field in the U.S. Um, as long as you can demonstrate that, it's it should be okay. Uh, and also maybe tagging on, on that, um, we are looking at the definition of theater in its broadest possible way. 
So it's conceivable that you could make a case that uh, working on a runway show was a theatrical production. We had a designer in one of our other um, programs for designers, and he certainly was designing in a variety of kinds of disciplines and uh, made the case that he was a scenic designer and costume designer as well, uh, made the case that a runway show was a theatrical event um, and made a case strong enough that the panel bought it. So uh, you can, you know, make yep. that case. Okay, I think we might be coming to a close here on our info session. Again, uh, reach out if there are questions, comments, things that just need clarifying because you're confused about anything. Uh, we're really happy to help you. Um, we hope that this has been informative, helpful for you. Oh, I see another one. Two more, um, actually, Amelia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you please, let's see, the parameters for having a commitment to the not-for-profit theater. Um, again, I think that's quite uh, varied. It could be at one end of the spectrum that actually you're enrolled in a professional theater program and your degree is going to be um, in costume design. So that's certainly one end of the spectrum. It could be um, that you're not enrolled necessarily in a theater program. We also understand that not all academic institutions necessarily have theater programs that are separate. Sometimes they're part of communications or another department and area. Um, but you've been um, working as a designer on several shows uh, that were separate from your schoolwork. Um, so you could make the case that way. Um, so I think you would have to show that there would be uh, some experience, some work that is theatrical, if that helps, if that makes sense. Um, can an intending international student resuming in spring apply? Um, yes. Uh, I'm assuming that you would be attending a school in the US, Puerto Rico, or a tribal nation versus uh, somewhere that is not in the US. Um, so if you are returning, to school will be a student at a US academic institution, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Uh, and to add, Amelia, we actually get this question a lot about international student, right? Every year. Um, the only criteria pertaining to this is uh, you have to be able to receive taxable income in the US, right? And many, if not like all of the international students are actually able to receive taxable income. So that's not an issue, but you have to double check if you have that uh, ability. But uh, the the more important thing for, for us is, uh, is that you can demonstrate, again, the commitment to the uh, not-for-profit uh, professional theater in the U.S. So if you can demonstrate that through line, um, you should be okay. Uh, and also, actually, you know, with these couple of questions about commitment to a not-for-profit career, that's actually where your uh, recommenders are going to be, you know, your best friends and the most helpful, uh, because hopefully they would be looking at uh, your uh, interest, your experience, your future goals uh, from a larger perspective. Um, so that's something to think about. It doesn't have to be just all on you answering all these questions. You could figure out how best your recommenders can support you make, making the case. I think maybe now we are slowing down. <laughs> Last call. Last, Last call, call, people. <laughs> all good? Okay. Um, so we're going to wind down here on our end. We really appreciate you all um, spending some time with us to learn more about TCG and also about the program. As Big mentioned, we're going to be posting the video so you could go back to it. Or if you have a friend or colleague uh, that wants more info, you could share it with them. They could take a look um, and let us know. Uh, what questions you might have. And we hope to see you and your application um, come across our desk shortly, our virtual desk, as it were. Take good care and thanks so very, very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.